Interestingly, it seems Eric Jones is not only doubtful of Explanation 5, but also Explanation 6. The flag could have been disturbed by emissions from the backpack. In thinking about these possibilities, numbers 5 and 6 are very unlikely. For anyone who believes that the Apollo landings were filmed on the moon, the backpack emissions theory is a dangerous position to stand on. To start with, there are three types of emissions, oxygen, urine, and wastewater. The Apollo EVA suit has a relief valve to bleed out excess pressure if the suit became overinflated. Obviously, in the vacuum of space, and with 20% more sunlight, the release of any gas into space would stand out like a sore thumb. If you remember back to Apollo 13, astronaut Jim Lavelle reported that he could see oxygen seeping out of his damaged service module. We are, uh, we are venting something out uh, into the uh, into space. Roger, we copy your venting. So the gas and so forth. It was not until we really saw the oxygen escape from the rear end of our spacecraft that we realized that we were in very, very deep trouble. Then we got that sinking feeling, you know, that searing sensation in your stomach. If David Scott's suit was relieving air pressure, these emissions would have been very noticeable. The same is true with liquid emissions. For cooling, the spacesuit has an inner skin-tight layer known as the liquid cooling garment, which allows cool water to channel through tiny tubes and relieve astronauts of metabolic heat. The water is then transferred to the heat exchanger and blasted outside the suit, where it freezes. For urinating, an astronaut's penis is inserted into a roll-on tube, which allows the urine to be piped away into a metallic reservoir that sits on the stomach. When the tank fills, it empties by rejecting the urine into space. As with water emissions, urine freezes. Astronaut Wally Shara of Sigma 7, Gemini 6 and Apollo 7 once described these visible ice crystals as the constellation Orion. On page 196 of Lloyd Malin's book on spacesuits, we are told... During the Gemini flights, a new word was coined, Uriglow. Because in the intense cold of outer space, the urine froze almost instantly into ice crystals and would travel along in orbit with the spacecraft. When the craft headed toward a sunrise, the solar glow would illuminate the urine crystals, causing them to look like bright stars, brilliant enough to be photographed by the astronauts. So, if we have just seen a flag blasted by suit emissions, where are those emissions? Absolutely nothing can be seen here in the flag, or coming into frame, or dispersing into the vacuum after Scott has left the frame. Due to the total lack of visible emissions, it can be confidently stated that the backpack emissions theory is, unequivocally, BUSTED. busted. Rejecting both the backpack emissions theory and the static electricity theory, Eric Jones moves on to number four. The impact of his boots on the ground as he ran past could have shaken the flagstaff. According to NASA's Apollo 15 press kit, David Scott weighs 175 pounds, which is 79 kilograms. Yours truly weighs approximately 74 kilograms. In other words, the Apollo 15 command pilot and the grandson of the Apollo moon hoax theory have near identical weights. Taking full advantage of this, we decided to test the footsteps theory. For this experiment, my bed sheets were allowed to hang loosely from my mattress. 
they will act as the Apollo 15 flag. If this movement was caused from the shock waves produced by David Scott's feet hitting the lunar surface, we should have no trouble in moving these sheets. As you can see, walking past these sheets produces absolutely no visible movement. And I must stamp my feet in order to create the bed sheets to flutter. Of course, this is when I'm standing right up to the bed. Watch what happens when I stand further away and jump like I've never jumped before. Do you see the sheets waving? Also consider that on the moon, David Scott would weigh only one-sixth of his normal weight, thus gentling his footsteps and lessening the shock waves. It seems Eric Jones is also quick to shoot down this theory. Dave probably doesn't get close enough to the flagstaff for his footballs to have any noticeable effect. With this statement, Together with these results, it can be confidently stated that the footsteps theory is, unequivocally, BUSTED. This brings us to numbers 2 and 3. He could have kicked some dirt with his boot that hit the bottom of the flag. Or, he could have pushed a mound of soil sideways with his boot that pushed against the flagstaff. In both cases, Jones is again skeptical. The possibility that Dave kicked some dirt high enough to hit the bottom of the flag is not out of the realm of possibility. Although in the many cases where we have good TV coverage of sprays of dirt flying out ahead of running astronauts, most of the particles have relatively flat trajectories and land after traveling a meter or so. To illustrate a point, here is an example from Apollo 11, showing Buzz Aldrin's famous dance across the moonscape. The arcs of dust he is kicking up are thick and quite noticeable. Now compare that with the Apollo 15 video. Do you see any heaps of dust hitting the flag or its pole? And as Eric Jones concludes... My impression is that few, if any, particles go above knee height. Taking into account the absence of any noticeable heaps of dust seen in the video and the implausibility of particles coming into contact with the flag, it can be confidently stated that the dust impact theory is unequivocally busted. busted.